of each carol, you can just uh, have a seat as we keep going. Friends, as we gather again to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, tonight we're going to hear from Scripture about why He came, uh, what it was that He achieved, and how He might change our lives today. Uh, we're going to learn of God's purpose in creating us, and we're also going to reflect on the consequences of humanity's rebellion against God. Uh, we're going to listen to prophecies that speak of the coming of a Saviour. And we're going to hear from the Gospels, those accounts of Jesus' life in the Bible. Uh, we're going to hear from the Gospels about the way in which Jesus fulfilled these predictions. Uh, each uh, reading, each lesson is going to be followed by a prayer and a carol or some other song. Uh, that's just to help us respond to what we've heard from the Bible. Uh, but uh, a great way for us to start together... Uh, is to uh, ask God to help us. Uh, we're going to pray together, and uh, I would invite you, if you feel comfortable, to join me in praying the words that will come up on the screen. We're going to ask God to speak to us through this whole experience tonight, uh, so that this Christmas we might truly know His Son, and that we might serve Him forever. So friends, if you feel comfortable, just as you're staying seated, uh, please join with me in this prayer as it's on the screen. Together. Loving God, open our hearts and minds to the truths revealed in your word. Help us to understand your plan for humanity and the salvation that you offer us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Make us grateful for his coming and enable us by your Spirit to find joy and peace in him. Amen. Well, the story of Christmas uh, begins before the stable in Bethlehem. It actually begins right at the very beginning. So that's what we're, where we're going to start um, our time this morning, by looking right at the very start of the Bible's story. Uh, God creates human beings to be uniquely related to Him and to rule over the rest of His creation as His image and in His likeness. And Shannon's going to bring us the first reading. Thanks, Shannon. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful in and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Let's pray. God, our Creator, we give you thanks for the wonderful gift of life, with all its challenges and opportunities. Turn our hearts to praise you and serve you as you deserve. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.
Well, we're going to move on now uh, to hear from Genesis chapter 3. Uh, and we're going to hear how human beings fail to live in trust and obedience to God. Uh, and of the disastrous consequences for ourselves uh, and our relationships with one another. And also for our care of God's creation. And Lucy's going to bring that reading to us. Thanks, Lucy. The reading comes from Genesis 3, verses 1 through 15. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that we have turned away from you, bringing judgment upon ourselves and upon the world in which we live. Thank you for the promise in scripture of ultimate victory over sin, death and all the powers of evil. Amen.
That's good. Many of you have found those candles, so do make use of those. And actually, I wonder whether we might turn the fluoro lights off here for the rest of the service. Would that be alright? We can see the candles a bit better as we go through. Uh, well, uh, we've heard of God's creation and humanity's fall. We now turn to the great promise of God given to us. Uh, and Andrew will read that in a moment. God begins this process of restoration by calling Abraham to trust him and by promising to make a great nation from his descendants. Uh, Israel will become the, the channel of blessing for all peoples of the earth. Uh, so thanks, Andrew. Andrew's going to read from Genesis chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household, to the land, and I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Let's pray. Merciful God, we praise you for revealing yourself to Abraham promising to bring salvation to the whole world through his offspring. Give us a deeper understanding of how this has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. the prophecies that came. The prophet Isaiah predicts that God's plan of restoration will be accomplished by a king in the line of David who will reign wisely and justly, bringing God's salvation to Israel and the nations and reversing the effect of sin in the world. It's an amazing promise. And Miriam's going to read it to us from Isaiah Chapter 11. Thanks, man. 
A shoot will come from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt. The faithfulness and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of David, we acknowledge you as the Spirit-filled King, sent to establish God's righteousness and faithfulness in all creation. May your kingdom come in all its fullness and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin 
pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God yet born of Mary, ruler of an eternal kingdom, yet living as one of us, help us to ponder this great and mighty wonder and to worship you as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Shepherds by a host of angels. 
And Jane's going to read that to us from Luke chapter 2. Thanks. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Let's pray. Son of God, born in a stable, laid in a manger, no place is too low or mean for you to enter. Come to us and dwell with us, filling us with your love, your peace, your spirit, now and always. Amen.
lowly shepherds who were the first to hear of the birth of the Messiah, those shepherds find the newborn king lying in a manger, uh, as the angels predicted. And they glorify God for what they have heard and seen. And I'll continue to read uh, from Luke chapter 2, and the words will be on the screen. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's pray. Father, the shepherds believed the word that was spoken to them and hurried off to find their Saviour King. May we who have come to Jesus be like them in spreading the message about Him, glorifying and praising You all our days. Amen. Sarah's going to read this great account for us from Luke chapter 2. Thanks, Sarah. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for re revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Please pray with me. Sovereign Lord, with Simeon we greet your son as a suffering servant, who was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Thank you that he willingly took the punishment due to us, so that we might find pardon and be reconciled to you. Amen. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. 
The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing, blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Let's pray. Living God, when the powers of evil had done their worst, crucifying your son and burying him in death, you raised him to life again. Thank you that this mighty act, fulfilling your promises in Scripture, gives us the hope of sharing resurrection life with him. By your Spirit, change us into the likeness of your Son and make us witnesses in our own time to your plan of salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church on Sunday, on Boxing Day, the 26th, so please do join us then. 
Uh, we also have a special summer series through the weeks in January, and you should have a little flyer in your um, leaflet that you got on the way in about that. Uh, if you're visiting, or perhaps you're new in the area, we would love to have you visit for those weeks. Uh, it's a great chance to uh, come and think about wisdom together. Uh, living a wise life, living life with the grain of the universe. So that's our summer series. Please do come along then. Uh, and Merry Christmas! So have a great Christmas tomorrow. Uh, thank you for being with us. Please stay as long as you'd like. Uh, enjoy those candles. Uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. So have a great Christmas. God bless you. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks.